so you want to enhance the graphics of the original Metroid. Enhance. Enhance. Well, version 2.0 of Metroid HD is available, and we've got you covered. All links are in the video description. Step 1. Obtain your ROM. You'll have to do this stuff on your own, or the emulation authorities will come for me. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. Step 2. Download the latest dev version of the Messen emulator. Step 3. Download Metroid HD 2.0 at romhacking.net here. Step 4. Regain your composure after realizing you got distracted by an irresistibly glorious game of Minecraft. Step part of it! All right, now we're gonna slow down and move to step five, which is actually working with these files. And start by unzipping both folders as shown here. Next, make a copy of your ROM and rename it to metroidhd.nes. From there, open Messen for the first time. You'll be greeted with the configuration page. I opt to keep everything in the same location as the .exe file. Under Settings, select Preferences. I prefer navigating to Video and General Settings to select Vertical Sync and Integer Scale options. Under NES, make sure Enable HD Packs is checked. You can also list 100 in the first box of the Overclocking section for smoother gameplay. Then, make your way to the Input section to configure your controller. From here, open up a vanilla ROM for the first time. This will prompt Messen to create a few necessary folders. Make your way back to the Messen HD pack. Open the contents until you find the Metroid HD zip file. Copy the Metroid HD zip file and place it into the HD pack folder that Messen just recently created as shown here. Then unzip the file. At this point, you can delete the zip file and navigate your way back to Messen. Once you're in Messen again, open the Metroid HD ROM. If you have no desire to customize the pack, you're all set and you can stop the video. But if you're interested in customizing, stay on for the second half of the video and I'll show you some pointers. So, to customize first, we're going to make our way back to the HD pack. You have a couple of customization choices, one of which is to use some of the templated sound, graphic, or entire alternate pack options here as replacements for files in the main pack. Alternatively, you could also edit files in the pack directly if you'd like. We'll cover that latter option in more detail, as it is a little bit more involved. If you navigate back to the main pack and open it, you will notice a large number of files, most of which are either .ogg or .png files. The .ogg files are used for replacement sound. If you want to customize, you can use, either use some alternate sound located in the main pack download, or you can use your own sound by creating a .ogg file. A simple file swap should be sufficient as long as you use the same name. The use for most sound files should be fairly self-explanatory. Make sure that when replacing music, you have seamless start and end points for the music to facilitate proper looping. For graphics, it's helpful to have extra large icons showing. If you scroll through, you should find some areas that look familiar. What you will need to locate will depend on what you want to edit. So, if you wanted to edit the Brinstar tiles, you would need to open the file here and make your changes. You may notice that at the very top there are repeating tiles. Those usually signify some kind of animation. In the case of this artwork, the multiple tiles are used for red glowing eyes and you would need to edit each one individually. If you wanted to edit the Samus animations, you will find the sprite sheets here. Keep in mind that if you edit one variant, you will need to make blue and green versions of the files as shown here. Otherwise, if you don't complete this step, you will notice some graphic glitches. This is because some of the green and blue graphics are always behind the normal colors, and the normal colors act as a bit of a mask. And for the last pointer, one helpful feature of the latest update is that users can customize entire backgrounds and foregrounds. To do this, open the Photoshop file. 
Once inside, you will notice a few layers that should be fairly self-explanatory. If you wanted to edit the top layer, make sure you have the top layer highlighted when making those changes. Once you are finished making changes, turn off all other layers other than the one you just edited. Then, either save your file as map-toplayer.png or map-bottomlayer.png. And those are the basics that should cover the highlights of what you should need to know to make various changes to your liking. I hope you found this video useful, and as always, happy gaming.